I love that our God is alive. Here's word, I'm just, I love that our God is alive. And here, here's the other thing that I was thinking about during worship. Um, that the song we played before it, what can I say, what can I do? And I, I was just back there, I'm going, there's just, when, when there's something that you've done wrong before a perfect and holy God, there's, there's nothing. And, and it just brought me just the incredible praise that, that all I can do is just offer my heart and my life back to God. And I hope that, that you know that you're here and maybe you've screwed up in life, that, that you have a second chance, you have a third chance and a fourth chance and a fifth chance. And, uh, and, and what are you called to do? What, what does God desire from you? Um, your heart. You know, just give him what's inside and see what he does. Um, and it's an incredible life that God gives to us. I have to admit, I walked in this morning, and um, I thought I was in the wrong place. It was so weird. I saw these people sitting up front, and I'm like, what's going on? And then I saw, like, people that have never sat in these front rows. I'm like, who are you? And then, and then the Russells. Dude, when I saw you, I'm like, wait, I thought I was in the wrong place. I didn't know what was going on. And then someone's like, yeah, they're telling me to sit down. And I was like, oh, man, I love it. And I'm like, you obeyed. And then I was like, that doesn't happen. Usually when we ask you to do something, you still rebel. That's just who you are. And I love that about you, but that's just reality. But today you obeyed. Thank you for, for doing that. And, and honestly, like the reality of a church and a community and our desire, we've been talking about this for years, honestly, is that there's something about worshiping together rather than sporadically that, that is a beautiful thing. So I hope that this is the beginning that some of you will start coming down. Anyway, we'll see what God does with that. Uh, I, 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 let, me, let me just say this too. Let me just start. Um, it's 2012. And I, I honestly can say, I believe this is going to be one of the most exciting years in the life of this church. Uh, I, I can't, um, I, I just can't remember a year, we've been doing this for about 10 years now, uh, a, a year that, 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 we've, that we've started in, in January, other than probably two years ago when, when the vision, and God had given us the, that vision of Homes of Faith, that was, but, but this is kind of just the continuation and kind of an implementation that, that I believe this, people, I believe that if you participate We'll take your participation. If you participate in the things that we're going to do over the next six months, that, that you are going to have stories to tell about how God moved in your life. And, and it is awesome when someone says, why do you believe in God that you have a story to tell? And, and, and it's going to start today. I hope you're ready for that. The challenge starts today, meeting with God every day for the next 40 days. And I guarantee you, you're going to have a story to tell if you meet with him every single day and participate in the, in, in, in the 40-day boot camp on the edge challenge. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about it. I really can't wait to see what God does uh, through it all. And the series that we're going to start uh, this morning is called On the Edge. And I don't know about you, but <clears throat> um, I, I love living life on the edge. I know some of you are not as risk takers. Some of you are risk adverse, and that's okay. We love you. I love you. That's for sure. But I'm a little bit of a risk taker. I, love to, I kind of like to be on the edge physically. I remember when I was young, uh, we'd go to Arkansas, and uh, we, would, we, would be up, uh, we would we'd be on a boat, and we'd be on these rivers, these lakes, and there would be these cliffs. I mean, Arkansas is cliffs. I never knew that. I never, I never knew that until I was actually there. But they do. They, it's a beautiful state. I, I mean, like the Razorback State. Anyway, they have these beautiful cliffs. And, and you would jump 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, and then 40 feet off these cliffs. And you'd be standing on the edge. You'd be standing on the edge. You'd be like, do I jump? Do I jump? Do I jump? Yes! <laughs> you got scared, didn't you? All right? I mean, so many times physically... Yeah, I was hoping that held me up because I didn't try that before and I was just as scared as all of you right in that moment. So I'm just telling you. And Stephanie's like, yeah, there's something you can jump down. I'm like, really cool. 
oh, I live another day. All right, so but it's those kind of stuff, right? You're on the edge. Do you jump? Do you not jump? You know, I, we've been parasailing where all of a sudden you're on the edge of a boat and this parachute goes out and boom, you're like flying up in the air. I've jumped out of an airplane thanks to my life. Thanks to my wife and my life. I have, still have my life, thankfully. And, and you, you know, you've jumped out of these things and, and you're, oh, you're on the edge. And, and you're, on, you're on this edge and you're like, do I go or do I not go? Do I, do I try it? If I take that step, am I going to love it? Am I going to hate it? Am I going to miss out if I don't do it? But we're on the edge. And, and the reality is life, life is filled of so, much, so many more things than just physical steps of faith and just physical uh, places where you're on the edge. I mean, just think about your life a little bit of how many times, how many, how many moments daily that, that, that you live that you're going, should, should I take the promotion or do I stay here? And you're on the edge. What do I do? Uh, how, how many times are, are you like, you know, you're in high school and you're like, man, do I ask that girl out on a date or do I not? Do I, do I do it? Do I not do it? Well, you're, you're on the edge. You know, you're a girl and you're like, do I say yes or do I say no? You're on the edge. There's so many things in life that, that we get to, we get to this place where, where we come to these edges, these moments of life that we have a decision to make. And over the next seven weeks, we're going to talk moments in our life, and they're, they're, they're daily moments in your life, where you are on the edge of whether or not you should do something or not do it. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you're on the edge and you shouldn't go. So, so this isn't like a, a faith series all right, this is, this is, this is more a, a series about just being on the edge and decisions that you need to make in life. And this morning, we're going to talk about what you say, how you communicate. I mean, think about how many times that you're on the edge in life of whether or not you should say something. You know what I'm saying? There's conflict, right? A coworker, your wife your child, whatever it is, there, there's conflict. And, and in your head, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're going like 100 miles a minute, and you're like, do I say that or do I not say that? Should I take it more, you know, should I take it further? Should I raise my voice or should I, lo should, should I intensify the conflict or do I bring it down? What do you say? What do you do? You're on the edge. How many of you, like, received an email? I, I, we get these. It's weird. But you, you receive an email and you get an email and you're like, what is that? And here's your reaction if you're honest. <laughs> Enter, take that, right? I mean, how many of you are like, I mean, how many, how many of us are like that, right? You, you want, you're on the edge. You're like, man, I'm going to write this. E Don't do that. Pick up the phone, call somebody and say, hey, I got a problem with your email. Let's talk, right? Okay, anyway, so... So how many times we're on the edge of, of what to say? How many times we're on the edge of like, should I lie to mom and dad? Yeah, oops. <laughs> See, you need a beef in the front. I can hear you. We can relate. Amens are going to come back. I mean, all this kind of stuff, right? Okay. Okay, now you stay quiet. I'll tell you when to speak. No, I'm kidding. Okay, on the edge right there. That was too much. Sorry, take it back, all right? I mean, how many times, right, are you like, mom and dad, do I lie or do I not lie, right? I mean, how many times, how many times are you, are you sitting there in, in a situation, you got a group of girls all around you, and bleep, 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 I mean, women, whoop, bleep, 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 <laughs> right? I mean, girls, I don't mean women, I mean, girls, bleep, 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 right? And, and all of a sudden, the stuff's kind of going on, and, and then you're like, man, do I gossip about this person, or do I not gossip about this person? Do I, do I take, do I, do I tell more about this person than what I, how many times are on the edge in those conversations? Daily. We're on the edge of what do we say and what don't we say. And let me just tell you this. God speaks directly to this. Our God is alive and well. He knows your situation, and he speaks to you through the word of God. So open up your Bibles to James chapter 3. Uh, you remember that earlier in the fall, we went through the first two chapters of James. This morning, uh, we're going to start a sermon series. We're going to go through the last three chapters of the book of James, just kind of verse by verse. We're going, to take, uh, we're going to take one passage at a time, 
and, uh, and God is just going to take it and, and move powerfully uh, in, in our lives. But, uh, you know, uh, the reality is, is daily we are on the edge of whether to praise, right, whether to praise God or, or whether to encourage somebody or whether to curse God. And curse God does not mean the four-letter words, all right, it can include that. But, but cursing God can mean hating God or hating somebody, discouraging something or whatever. So chapter, uh, James chapter 3, uh, starting at, at verse 1. As you turn there, let me just give you a little bit of context because it's so important that we always know the context of Scripture before we get into it. The context, you remember, this is written to followers of Jesus. All right? This letter is written to Christians, those people who know Jesus, who are following Jesus, but they got major issues because they are being persecuted for their faith. All right? They, they're being scattered, James chapter 1, verse 1 talks about. They're scattered among, all right? And, and so there's been persecution. Uh, you know, uh, soldiers are going to their homes and taking fathers, dividing families, and, and God speaks into this situation. And what's also going on in the book of James is you have people, is people coming into the church, they're coming into this community, all right? So, so, so they're coming into this church, and, and, and they're saying they believe in Jesus, and yet they're living a completely different life. Now, of course, that sounds completely foreign to us. Not really, Right? Okay, it speaks directly to us, right? Where we're, we're saying, maybe we're saying one thing, we're believing in one thing, and yet our lives are, are, are different. And, and James, I mean, and, and God is like, hey, James, write this down. And, and, and God just speaks directly into their situation, and he talks about, in James chapter 3, he begins to talk about what we say. So let's look at James chapter 3, starting at verse, um, starting at verse 1, and, uh, and let me pray before we, before we get going. Lord God, once again, before we uh, just open up your word, I pray that you will, uh, Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this place. Uh, Lord, penetrate our hearts. Um, uh, Lord, some of us, honestly, are just hard towards you right now. Some of us don't like you. Some of us are frustrated with you. Uh, Lord, some of us right now are in moments of, of whether or not we confess a sin and we tell somebody a sin or, or whether we say something that's too harsh or, or whatever. Lord, I just pray that you will use this time, that you will use your word to penetrate our hearts so that we will live uh, for you in everything that we do. Uh, we give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So look at James chapter 3, starting uh, at verse 1. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says... He is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. All right, Verse, verses 1 and 2, James, James I, 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 I just like where, where, where he goes with this, because he, he puts us all on common ground. Look, look, at, look at verse 2. Uh, it, it's, it's, so, it's, 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 such a, it's such an encouraging thing. Um, look, look, at, look at verse 2. All right, It, it talks about what? It says, uh, we, all, we all stumble in many ways, all right? My temptations, my struggles can be different than yours, okay? Um, I may struggle with greed, and you may look at me and you go, why do you struggle with greed? I'm, not, I'm a very generous person. How could you do that? You, you may struggle with lust, and I may be like, why do you struggle with lust? What's up with that? We all struggle in different ways, all right? But, but one way, and one thing that we all have in common that we all struggle with, is what we say. What we say, all right? You, you want to you write this down. <clears throat> we all have said something wrong. We all have said something wrong, Okay? Can you, can you admit that? Can you, like, tell your spouse, I've said something wrong. Kids, tell your parents. Michael, right now, I see, I can watch you right now, see? I've, I've said, isn't that freeing? You have. You've said something wrong. We all have. And, and I love, I mean, I mean, I don't love that. We all have, but the reality is we all have. We all can relate to that. And the reality is what I love about it is we all need to have grace when it comes to words. Okay. We need to have grace with each other because we all have said something wrong. 
There's no one here that has not said something, you know, every time correctly, the perfect way, or else you'd be perfect, and we know that you're not perfect. Um, you know, it, it, it's now, now, now some of us struggle with it more, more than others. Uh, there's your external processors. Their, their external processor is somebody who, who just says what they're thinking, okay? So whatever comes into this little noggin, whoop, guess what I am? Yeah. Okay, so then there's internal processors. They, they like think. They process internally, and then what they say, they don't say very much, but what they say they mean. Does that make sense? Because they've internalized it. Okay? Now, who screws up more? Well, most likely the external processors. Why? Because they say more. They can't stop speaking. And so they say more, so they screw up more. And, and just think about this in, in your relationships with people. Let's say you're married to somebody who's opposite. Now, Michelle and I, we have so much stuff in common, but this is just one area that we're a little bit different in. I'm an external processor. She's an internal processor. So imagine, imagine life in the Smith home. Ron, when it comes to conflict, just starts saying stuff. I, let's just start talking about it. I don't care if I say something wrong. Let's just, let's just start talking. So Michelle is receiving this. And she's going, well, everything that I say is true. Everything I say is what I mean. So when Ron says that, that's what he means. Therefore, ah, he's a mean. Does that make sense? Right? And, and me as an external process, I'm like, Michelle, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking now? What are you thinking now? What are you thinking now? Can you speak now? Can you speak now? Right? It's fun. I mean, it's a great marriage. It really is. No, it really is a ton of fun. <laughs> now that we know this about each other. Anyway, does this make sense? So those external processes, if you're an external, you probably screw up a little bit more. Right? But once again, we, what we all have in common is that we all have said something wrong. All right? Now, it does, verse 1 talks specifically about teaching. And it, and it says, teachers, man, when you speak, you, you will be judged more strictly. Isn't that interesting that the Word of God talks about that? So, so if you're a pastor, small group leader, um, uh, if you're a counselor, uh, if you're a dad, uh, if, if you're a teacher, be careful. Be careful with what you do. Be careful with what you say. I mean, it's humbling every week to, to get up here and, and, and to preach, to speak to you. And, and there's times I've, I've messed up, and, and I need to go to you in those things. And, but whether you're a teacher or whether you don't have that teaching gift, what we have all in common is that we all have said something wrong. All right, let's continue on in, in James chapter 3, starting verse 3. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Wow! That's powerful. The tongue can do some serious damage. This little tongue, three ounces, that's how much it weighs, average, four inches long on average, can do so much damage. It can destroy. It controls direction. If you want to write this down, what we say determines direction. Um, when uh, my daughter was, was riding a horse one time, and um, the horse got out of control, 
and I was not on the horse, I was off the horse. The horse was coming at me. My little, you know, uh, daughter was on the horse, and she's like, what do I do? Like, she, I mean, the panic. And the only thing that this little girl could do is pull back the reins with this bit in the horse's mouth to have it stop. And the horse stopped. Just by that little thing. It sent direction to the horse by that little thing. Your tongue, what you say, sets direction. It sets direction for people's lives. In fact, because of the gospel, it even determines destiny. If you hold the gospel in, the good news of Jesus Christ, the, the, this, the people need to hear the, the gospel. They need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, and you hold that. People need to hear it. Speak it. Preach it. Determines direction. I mean, just think about how many things, where, how many situations we have in life where what we say matters. You, you have your marriage. What you say to your spouse matters. Do you encourage your husband or discourage him? Do you say beautiful things about your wife or hateful things towards your wife? What do you say? To your kids, right? To your kids, do you express love to them? Do you tell them, I love you? Or do you withhold that kind of stuff? What do you say? I mean, we, we know the power of words. We know what it's like. With the, to know the power of words, just think about what people say to you and how it affects you. Just think about how your life is changed around when someone encourages you and says, Ross, man, I love you. I love when you laugh. I love all these different things about you. You walk out and you're like, this is sweet. But if I say, man, Ross, you got some issues, dude. I mean, man, the way you treat Julie, blah, blah. I don't know. I, I, mean, I mean, that's just going to tear him down. What you say matters. What you say to your kids matters. What you say at work matters. What you say to, your, to the people who are underneath you at work matters. What you say matters. It sets direction. It can impact a child for life. It can influence a person's decision right? It, it can destroy a person's confidence. A rumor that is spoken can, can destroy a reputation. How? Oh, just this little three ounce, four inch thing that comes out of your mouth. And the words that come out. Uh, at Christmas time, um, Michelle and I, uh, we, we, we encountered a little conflict with some of our family. I don't know if any of you have family conflict, but, um, but this pastor's family is not, is not perfect. And uh, I mean, my family, my immediate family is perfect, so Michelle and I are perfect and our kids are perfect. <laughs> but all those other people out there, uh, not so much. And so uh, Christmas Eve night, Christmas Eve night, uh, we, we, we engage with, with some family and... Uh, and uh, we begin to, to have conversation, and we can tell there's con you know what You know when you, you can just tell there's conflict in the air? You know what I mean? When you like walk in a room and you're like, whoa, this is deep. Something's going on. Okay, well, we, we felt that. All right? And, and, and I'm not going to tell you the, the details of it, because that would that, that just be wrong. But, but I, I will say this. Um, Michelle and I were right in what? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Take that, family. <laughs> Michelle and I were right in what we were trying to do, but we were wrong in the way that we did it. Okay? So the conflict comes, and, and me and this person that I'm in conflict with, we, we seriously were a f about a foot and a half away from each other. Foot to foot, man to man, face to face. Like it's the first time that I'm like, am I actually going to get in a fight? I've never been in a fight. Like, all my years, I've never been in a fight. I'm like, oh, my, what's going to happen? And, 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 and this person says this to me. He says, fine, we'll have peace for the week. And, and when he said that, part of me was like, okay, sweet. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> peace for the week, sweet. Um, and, and yet I'm going, what I say next, I mean, he knows I'm a pastor. He knows I'm a follower of Jesus. They, they, they know who we are, what we're trying to do, and all these kind of things. And... Uh, 
And I'm going, what I say next is going to determine direction of this relationship for at least the next week, if not the next year, if not potentially for the rest of our lives. And, and, and what I did in, in that moment is, is I just, I, I grabbed him and I hit him in the face. No, I grabbed him. I grabbed him and I said, I want more than peace. I want relationship with you. And, and, and when I said that, things just kind of calmed a little bit. I mean, there was, still, there was still some frustrations. There was still some things we needed to work out. But it was clear, all in the words that I said. Now, if, if I would have said, take that, you know, and I would have said, well, you did, and you know what else? And I also think, and you're doing, right? What happens? What do you say? The words that come out of your mouth are so powerful. It can destroy a marriage and build a marriage. It can destroy a child. It can build them up. It can, it can divide a church. It can unify a church. What we say determines direction. Now let's look at verses 7 to 8. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men. Who have been made in God's likeness. I mean, that, that's just powerful to soak that in. When you speak to somebody, you're speaking to God's creature. You're speaking to somebody who has been made in the image of God. <clears throat> Verse 10, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a, can a fig tree bear, ol bear olives or a, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. See, what we say comes from within. Can, can a fig tree produce olives? You know, can, can an olive tree produce fit? I mean, who you, it, it's, it's the inside stuff, people. See, our, our tendency is, well, I'm going to try to change the words that I say. I'm going to be different. I'm going to change my behavior. I'm going to change what I say. I am no longer going to say that four-letter word, and I'm no longer going to say that to my wife, and I'm no longer going to say that to my kid, and I'm no longer going to do that and do that. And you know what? For a little bit of time, for the short time, you may be able to do it. You may be able to have the victory. In fact, you may be able to no longer say this four-letter word or, or lie or gossip or, you know, please know when we talk about the tongue and we talk about the seriousness of it, we're not talking about curse words. We're not talking about like four-letter words. It's much deeper that comes out of your mouth, lies and gossip and all these kind of things. We try to change behavior. We try to change what we say. But no man can tame the tongue. The, the only way that, that we get control is by an internal change that comes from God himself. You can't do it without the Holy Spirit, without God in you and living inside of you. If you want change then change what's on the inside, and what's on the inside will then flow out. So if you have problems with lying, if you have problems with what you say, if you have problems with losing your temper with your wife, if you have problems with losing temper with your kid, if you have problems with anger, if you have problems with all these kind of things, stop trying to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this, I'm going to change this, I'm going to change this, I'm going to change this. Instead begin to go, what's up in my relationship with God? Why is this stuff coming out? This is a huge, huge parenting understanding. See, your kid's behavior 
is not necessarily, I mean, the behavior you may need to change, but the way that you change your child's behavior long term is not to say, don't do that anymore. Stop it. But it's to go, what's going on that that's coming out? Especially as they get older. You know, Hannah, what's going on within you that, that you're acting in this way? Let's talk about that stuff. Because it happens on the inside. The change happens on the inside. And then your words and, and all those things will flow out and you'll see fruit in your life. Can the worship team come up? And, and people, this is, this is why... <laughs> Listen... The next six weeks, we are going to talk about just some tough stuff, daily stuff that needs to be changed. The reality is we all have something to change when it comes to the words that we use. But people, the only way that those changes are going to come about is with an internal change, which is why we say to you, get in the Word of God every day. Every day. Meet with God every day. And see how God begins to take your internal stuff and all that junk that's going on and begins to have an overflow, an outflow of goodness to other people. You, you may be thinking, why in the world would I ever do this 40-day challenge of reading the Bible every day and doing all this kind of stuff? I mean, it sounds good, but man, I, I, the, reason why we want, the reason why we want you to do this is because we know that if you desire, if you truly desire to build a home of faith, if you desire to have your roommate if you're single, if you desire to have the friends who are around you if you're single, if you desire your family, your, your marriage to, to, to reflect, to, to be a house of faith, a house that honors Jesus Christ, get in the Word of God. You can't do it without the Word of God. You can't. It's, it, it's impossible. How, how do you be a dad and teach the Word of God to your kids when you don't know it? So, so this morning, you have a great fresh start, a new day, a new beginning. Maybe you've come in and you're like, I have no idea what the Bible even is. Maybe you're like, man, I've screwed up as a dad so much. Today's a new day. It's a new day for you, a new beginning that could start today. And, and this is all we want you to do. We want you to check out that commitment card that, that's in your connection. Put, check those boxes, commit, get off the edge, make the commitment, jump, do it. You know, don't think I need to know more. You don't need to know more. Go for it. Do it up. All right? And then you get this booklet. And within this booklet, it's going to tell you everything that you need to know. You, you're going to be able to do a, a spiritual life assessment. Where am I at with God? How important it is to know where are you at with God? Be honest with this. Don't lie. Right? Be honest. This is where I'm at. I'm terrible. I'm in a bad place. Sweet. Awesome. Let's start there. I've never read the Bible every day. Awesome. Let's start there. And then we're going to have you do different things throughout the week. We're going to teach you what's called the inductive Bible study method. We're, we're, we're going we're to try to help you to know what it is to look at the Bible, to observe it, to then interpret it, and then apply it to your life. And so throughout this booklet, you have different days. Some days you're just going to journal. Some days you're going to do an inductive Bible study. And you'll notice that, that we're ramping it up. So the first week you only have two inductive Bible studies. By the end you're doing about four or five a week. You can do it. If you want to see the internal changes in your life, we need you to get into the Word of God daily and encounter Him daily. And you will have stories to tell. You'll have stories to tell. Your life will be impacted and changed. And our prayer, honestly, is that because your life is impacted and changed forever, that your kids' lives are going to be changed and impacted forever. The people around you is going to be impacted and changed forever. Do you get what I'm going? It's going to multiply, 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 multiply. Let's do it. Let's be a part of it. Take the challenge and do it up. Because our behavior and the things that we say starts with an internal change in our relationship with God. Let me pray. Lord God, we just come before you. And, and Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will just fill this place up. Lord, I pray that you will encourage us, challenge us, Lord. Those people uh, who are like, man, I just have no idea what I'm even doing. Lord, I pray for them right now. 
Lord, that they will just have the courage, your courage that you give to them to start anew, to start afresh, to have a new beginning, to start meeting with you every day. For the next 40 days, 40 days, Lord, help us to do it. Lord, I pray for this church that you, you will do an incredible work in our church over these next six months. Lord, Lord, that this church will sacrifice, that, that we will just surrender, that we will abandon, we will just, we just love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love others as we love you. Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus says this in Matthew 12, verse 34. Jesus says, For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's out of the overflow of your heart that your mouth speaks. If, if, if you want to see different things coming out of your mouth, it comes right here. And, and, and if you take, if you, if you encounter God daily, you won't have to worry about what comes out of here because what's inside here is right. You'll know what to say in the certain situations that you're in because it's the overflow of your heart. But we need to get back in the Word of God. We need to get back in the Word of God daily. And this is a great way for you to be able to do that. So take this card out, check the boxes, go to the information table, give these. When you give this to us, then you get a booklet. No this, no booklet. No free passes. There is grace, though. I'm sure we can work something out. But anyway, we'd love to have you just keep you accountable on all those things. And what that is, I, I, I do need to say this. Uh, our hope is uh, right now we, have, we only have a couple. We have, we have about 100 booklets left. Adults, please take one. Uh, everything is going to be online. But if, if you know, if your, your children, uh, uh, this is hard for me to say. But at this point, they, they can't take one? Wow, do I sound mean. So um, anyway, but that right now we just want to get it all in the parents' hands and the adults' hands. Uh, maybe next week we'll have more, and, uh, and then we'll be able to give out more. All right, so make sure you do that. Thank you for being here. Come back next week as we continue on evil or good. What will you do? Thanks for being here.